activity. I'm very happy to have already this first session uh, quite a number of interested people here in the audience. And I can assure you it will be a very interesting presentation. I'm, I'm very sure because I know both of the ladies here to my left and to my right for many years already. Um, Cinzia Colangelo, and I will give you a few more words on her, and Silvia Marsili, they have set up an energy and mobility fund uh, in the framework of a so-called project development assistance project, MARTE, that we as the ASME have been financing to enable them to set up a financing instrument to bundle a few projects, especially in the hospital sector, and to make the financing work. Uh, a few more, just a few words that you know who I am. My name is Pjorn Sapfer. I am working as a project advisor in uh, the energy unit of the IASME. This is the executive agency for small and medium-sized enterprises. We as the IASME, our director has already done an introductory speech where he explained a bit what, what also we are doing on behalf of the European Commission. But in principle, the IASME is managing the energy efficiency part of the research and innovation framework program Horizon 2020. And we are all also managing the legacy of the preceding Intelligent Energy Europe program. And the ASME is also managing uh, the Horizon 2020 part dealing with climate and climate action and the LIFE program, which also supports climate um, um, mitigation and adaptation projects. If you have any questions, we also, I just want to tell you, we have also a stand here in the exhibition area mm -hmm. where there should be constantly either myself or some of my colleagues who can also give you some, some details on what we are doing and how we could also support your project ideas. But with having, that, that, having said that, I would now just like to turn to the focus of this session today, uh, which is the most important thing, of course. Uh, it will be, as I have said, a very interesting presentation on the energy and mobility fund that has been set up in the Italian Marche region. It's an innovative financing mechanism which really aims to well, accelerate public and uh, private financing for energy efficiency investments, and in doing so, it combines regional and also resources uh, from European funds, which is quite interesting. It uses financial instruments, and there are not so many really successful um, examples on the market, and you will see here one of those. Um, in this context, I have the pleasure to introduce you to two excellent speakers, uh, to my left and to my right. I've already Thank mentioned you. them. It's Cinzia Colangelo. She is a senior officer directly at the Marke region uh, in the Department for Land Protection Management and Planning, and she has been the project manager of the Project Development Assistance Project Marte that I have mentioned before. So he's, she is the, the guy who whom made it happen, if you wish. <laughs> yeah. And in the last year, she was responsible for the management of several European projects, mainly on environmental and uh, sustainable development issues. And in her presentation, she will start off, in her presentation, she will provide some background information on the MATA project, why they have set it up, and why it was necessary in this context also to initiate the Energy and Mobility Fund. Afterwards, that will be followed up by Silvia Marsili. She will now pr then provide more information on the fund itself, Silvia is the manager of public incentive measures at Artichan Casa, which is part of BNB Paribas Group in, in Rome. Um, and she has, um, she's in this context also responsible for fund management. And she has an experience of around, well, nearly 15 years, 13 years, I think exactly, of banking experience, including investment projects, financing, international cooperation, and also what is interesting, on lending of public funds to companies in the form of grants, soft loans, or also guarantees. So I've spoken a lot, but I will not speak a lot more. I promise you, with uh, having said that, I would just uh, like to hand the floor directly to Cynthia. Okay. And yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you. No. So, as always, if you have the first presentation, there are technical issues. That has to be like that to have a successful event. <laughs> you need the other presentation. <coughs> Uh, first of all, we had the approval of the Regional Operational Programme. 
And uh, then we developed, thanks to uh, external expert and ex-ante evaluation of the financial instrument. The ex-ante evaluation is mandatory. So you cannot set up uh, uh, this kind of financial instrument without an ex-ante evaluation. And this was the evaluation specific for financial instrument working on uh, some thematic objectives that in the program are represent, represented in Axis 4. Axis 4 of the program is dedicated to um, energy efficiency investment and um, to the reduction of CO2 uh, emissions. So uh, the, um, the ex-ante evaluation for this financial instrument was approved in June 2015. Then uh, the managing authority of the program um, had some uh, consultation, informal consultation, like informal meetings or telephone calls uh, of financial institution. Uh, then at the same time, we proceed to the selection of a standard expert to have support in the tender specification uh, to select the fund manager. Uh, the resources uh, for uh, the selection, yes, to, the resources to have external experts working with us, we uh, had we had from Mar Marty Project the resources to work with external expert. Then in December 2015, we had the tender publication, and at the same time, we organized uh, a presentation event that was really important to inform the market and the ESCO and other stakeholders about this new financial instrument. Uh, because we, um, we, we see that the uh, financial ecosystem was not so ready to produce uh, good project proposals and to work on financial instrument with this uh, uh, specification of energy efficiency, uh, on energy, energy efficiency projects. In July 2016, we succeeded to uh, have the fund manager, Artigian Cassa, and uh, we had finally the fund uh, establishment. So this is a summary of the way you should follow if you uh, want to replicate our experience. Um, I just, the extent evaluation uh, analyze a lot of issues and items. I want to show you only uh, one interesting uh, uh, table concerning the estimate of financing needs of market region for energy efficiency intervention. Because in the extent evaluation, yes, they, um, they, they assess, the, uh, they estimate the total financial need, and they also worked on the uh, resources that can come from the uh, instrument and the leverage action that the instrument can have uh, on public and private uh, financing. So, this result, uh, mm, the total financial need in the investment need column, is uh, the resources, uh, combination of resources from financial instrument, uh, resources from the program, and from private sector. Only with grant, uh, we couldn't achieve uh, this um, result. Um, during uh, um, yes, the problem was to um, uh, combine and as assemble uh, the document for the tender. The main uh, legislative uh, issues we faced so, uh, and problem we, uh, we had uh, concerned uh, that uh, in Italy the national legislation on public procurement was changing. The some uh, definition in the uh, <coughs> EU regulation was not clearly. We didn't have so many examples of contract. And uh, we, uh, here you don't have, but also there was a lot of work on a state aid issue. And uh, the, um, another aspect was to regulate and control the potential conflict of interest of, interest of the future fund manager. 
as for financial issue, financial yes, challenges, um, <coughs> we found that financial ecosystem was not re ready or experience in financial instruments uh, from um, um, structural funds. And these emerged uh, in, during two phases, during market consultation, market consultation and during the presentation event. Mm, if you want to proceed for uh, the setup of this kind of instrument, it's important to bring together uh, different kind of skill and resources, not, not only financial but also technical experts from public, private and public sector. Uh, and knowledge partnership is important. We had this experience in Marte project and uh, it succeeded because we consider a successful project. <laughs> it is too early uh, to tell you um, how the market is responding to uh, the financial instrument because uh, the tender for small and medium enterprises <coughs> is opening now and uh, yes we financed uh, some um, investment in the mobility sector then Artigian Casa will show you um, about it but uh, yes, a weak point is that municipalities are used uh, to grants. So unfortunately, the first tender addressed to public lighting is without the fund participa participation. Um, we can give you a um, key recommendation. Have a pilot project is a good start and uh, stimulate the market, uh, uh, small and medium enterprises and uh, banks and financial institutions during uh, uh, all uh, um, the, yes, to continue along this way of experience. Then uh, it's important to assess um, the energy efficiency targets of the fund and be active on monitoring the fund management. Uh, if you want to go deeply in the analysis of uh, our work for financial instrument, I, I leave you uh, some. I give you some uh, um, interesting link that you can find uh, in the Marte Project website uh, in the section dedicated to the fund and the presentation event. Then you can download an interesting deliverable of the project. Uh, dealing with specifically with the setup uh, uh, of the energy and mobility fund. And if you are interested in, uh, in the experience, uh, in the whole experience of Marty Project, you can download our final public record that you and you can find the executive summary in six languages. And I can tell you that you can find, uh, we put some uh, hard copies on the stand in the exhibition um, room. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Cinzia. I think that's a, a very interesting experience in the, in the plenary session at the beginning. It was mentioned that there was the Smart Financing for Smart Buildings initiative from the Commission uh, introduced, which has one of the pillars, we need to use uh, public funds more efficiently, which also means we, we need to use financial instruments to attract and leverage private sector capital. And this is a very good example where you see that as part of project development of the whole financing engineering exercise, also financial engineering, uh, financial instruments were used to set up a fund, which is now on the ground and which is working and which now can be used also not only for this specific project but further on specifically also for mobility <laughs> issues and therefore we are very happy to have Silvia here who will give you now more information on how the fund as such which is now there is working also in the future. Thank you, thank you to Bjorn and Cinzia. As Cinzia said that the market was not ready to respond to the bid, but um, we were ready. We submitted uh, our application and we got uh, the management of the Energy and Mobility Fund. Um, I will give you some information about Artigian Casa and then I will talk about the Energy and Mobility Fund um, from our uh, uh, fund manage management perspective. Um, I will talk about resource allocation, 
um, the loan conditions and I will provide uh, some figures about the uh, different uh, sections on which the fund is divided. So Artigian Casa is a financial intermediary that manages public um, funds to support local economies uh, and to support uh, small businesses main, mainly. Um, we, we were founded in 1947 and we were a state-owned company. Um, so um, through this body, the government used to vehicle resources to the manufacturing sector. Uh, in the 90s, uh, we um, went through a um, privatization process uh, that started in 1994 and ended in 1996 uh, with the acquisition um, of Artigian Casa by the Bank National, um, the National Labor Bank in Italy. Uh, in turn, uh, Artigian Casa was acquired by BNP Paribas Group, an international group that you uh, certainly recognize uh, from our logo. Uh, so Artigian Casa is a bank that is uh, very close to the territories because uh, in its uh, share capital we not only have um, the National Labor Bank but also a network of uh, national small business associations uh, that owns the 26% of our share capital. Uh, we over, we, our headquarters is in Rome and we have 17 regional branches and uh, um, a thousand of Artigian Cassa Point located within the premises, premises of uh, uh, local associations and guarantee funds. Uh, we, uh, um, in this slide, I put some financial instruments uh, on which uh, um, that testify our experience in public fund management. Um, I will not talk about each of uh, one, but uh, I think uh, um, certainly uh, what, in, in my opinion, is the most important is the Sustainable Growth Fund. Uh, which is set up by the Ministry of uh, Economic Development. And um, through this fund, the bank gives uh, subsidized loans uh, to enterprises in order to support research and development projects um, in line with the Horizon 2020 strategy. Um, the late uh, instruments that we set um, at the regional level is Fare Lazio. Fare Lazio is a set of instruments um, designed to um, improve credit access uh, for SMEs. Um, in market region, we work uh, with the Energy and Mobility Fund. Um, the region has selected uh, Artigian Casa through the public tender, and we um, have signed uh, the funding agreement with the region on uh, July 2016. Um, the fund provide, provides uh, zero inter interest loans, in order to support uh, uh, investment in energy efficiency in the public and in the private sector. We have uh, um, an allocation of 20 million euros um, distributed on four lines of interventions. Five millions are um, set to um, improve the efficiency in public buildings. Uh, 4.5 million uh, um, will support investment uh, uh, to reduce um, gas emissions uh, in the um, productive uh, um, cycles uh, of uh, the enterprises and in, in the industrial areas. Um, 6.7 million uh, uh, will be uh, used to renew uh, the um, fleet of uh, public transport companies within the region, and 4.3 million are uh, the amount of money that we set for the Marte project that uh, Cinzia explained before. So what is uh, um, interesting about the Energy Mobility Fund that 
is that the project are financed by a combination of grants and the financial instruments. Um, the four line of intervention have uh, different um, um, amounts uh, of grant and soft loans, and uh, it's, um, the the free uh, quota is um, about 15 per 25 percent uh, resources uh, can be um, the own resources of the enterprises or other uh, uh, financial um, uh, loans other uh, loans loans provided from the banking sector Mm, so the loan conditions um, are particularly favorable. Uh, the loan amount covers from 35 to 42 percent of eligible expenditures. Uh, no interest rate is applied. Um, we have a pay, payback uh, period up to eight years, and it is possible to choose a grace period of ma maximum 25 months. Uh, no collateral are required for the loan. Um, in, the, in the chart, uh, I wanted to show that the managing authorities, uh, in this case, market region, um, provides uh, funds uh, to the fund manager, and then the fund manager um, uh, disburses the loans to final recipients, and the um, uh, installment that will be paid will be reused for new loans. So, um, the Marte project. Um, Result divided, divided in three lots. Lot number one is related to Percola Hospital and Urbino Hospital with a total investment of, of 4.7 million euros. We will give the loans of uh, about 2 million euros to a network of two enterprises. The lot number two uh, is related to San Benedetto del Tronto Hospital. Um, with a total investment of 4.4 million euros, um, we will finance about uh, 2 million euros to the company Manuten Coop. Uh, lot number three, Sant'Elpidion and Petritoli Polyclinic, is the smallest lot with a total investment of 0 0.6 million euros and a loan amount of 0 0.3 million euros that will be given to a network of two companies, JASTA and CMP. So um, this um, line of intervention is about to start. Uh, application may be submitted by next Wednesday. Um, total available resources are 9 million and the Energy Mobility Fund will, pro will provide uh, 4.38 million euros of loans at uh, zero interest rate. Um, the um, contribution will be higher for smaller enterprises and um, uh, the grant will be um, disbursed directly by market region, while the loan directly from Artigian Cassa. So market region will um, assess the applications from a technical point of view, while uh, Artigian Cassa will assess the projects from a financing perspective. So we will. Uh, um, verify if the final recipient uh, will be uh, able to reimburse the loan. Uh, the two positive feedback of the two assessments will um, result in a concession for the enterprise. Uh, within the public uh, transport section, we have six companies that have received about 5.7 million of grants and 4 million in the form of loans. Uh, they will purchase 53 new vehicles 
uh, electric vehicles <laughs> uh, for uh, a total investment of about 12 million euros. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Silvia. I think that uh, just rounded up the whole picture of what uh, in this specific region, the market region in Italy, they tried to achieve at the beginning. And now we see that they have set up something especially uh, innovative in a way, as I've already mentioned, using uh, financial instruments to trigger also private investments, especially also in the five pilot hospitals. There was a combination then of soft loans, grants, and energy performance contracting, which I suppose is a challenging issue then in really to, you know, fit the private sector capital and also the, the public funds together. And I suppose on this basis, you might have a number of questions uh, to our panelists, and I would like to open the floor for any questions that you might have. Uh, just to, uh, uh, just say, uh, one question to the general understanding. The, the, the money which was given via EASM, uh, this was the, 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 the project and with this project, you set up, you, you organized yourself what to, 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 what to do in order to set up this fund. Yes, within the project, we had uh, we, uh, the, the multi project financed by EASME, uh, we had a step to, uh, a mandatory step to uh, work uh, for the setup of the Energy and Mobility Fund. So we had a collaboration within the pro thanks to this project, an early collaboration with the managing authority of the regional operational program. And we did uh, the necessary uh, step to, to have the fund. So first, the exempt evaluation, and then the selection of the expert to work on the tender documents. Maybe, maybe just a few words from the ASME because that's a financing on uh, specific instruments that we, we are using. I mentioned it's called project development assistance. Some of you might have heard of that. In principle, what we do um, is very similar to what the European Investment Bank is doing under a facility called, called ELENA. <coughs> Basic intention is we need really investments on the ground. So what we are financing, as the name is saying, is project development. So in principle, the idea in the market project was they have five hospitals or healthcare mm -hmm. institutions and they wanted to do deep renovation there. Uh, that was the idea. They had some energy audits. They had data on what is possible, but they didn't have the full financial engineering behind it. They didn't have the full business plans behind it. They didn't have all the expertise which is needed to set up a project in a public authority that has not done so much in the past on these issues. So what we are financing during a number of years, in this case it were three years, three years. Um, to finance exactly that, to put the public authority in a position to do the final engineering, to get the necessary expertise on board, uh, to do the business plans, to update their energy audits, etc. But also with a kind of a, a trigger at the end, because we say if we sign this contract, you get from us, let's say, one million. It's not the case here, but let's say it's easier to calculate. At the end, we want to have from you on this basis 15 million euros of investment, so a leverage of 1 to 15. So there is something where we say, okay, we give you something, but we want also for the taxpayers not a theoretical result, but a practical result. And now I come to the end. On the basis of this money, they did this financial engineering exercise. They had also that, that idea in mind at the beginning, in principle, but you have to shape that. You have to bring to. You have to set up the fund. It's not easy. It's really challenging. And you have to bring it together with energy performance contracting from so from the private sector. This was also challenging. So that's the reason why I said we are, we are really proud on this kind of project because there are not so many examples of projects that have done it. But this is a good solution which can be replicated. And this also why we wanted to showcase it here. Do we have more questions? Here is one over there. Well, it's more than one question, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just to understand a little bit more and uh, 
I have a question. Would you have your name and organization oh, maybe sorry. as well? Tamara Fischer from the city of Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, just first question, what do you mean with soft loan? Second question, what is the difference between your instrument and Elena? So you said it's nearly the same. And the third question, I have questions for everybody, <laughs> is uh, uh, you said something about the um, difficulties to work with the contractors and you had to resolve this. I would uh, be interested to know more about uh, the kind of pr uh, problems you saw in the developing. Con contract model, you mean? So um, I'll answer the first question. <laughs> so a soft loan uh, is a loan with um, a, an interest rate which is lower uh, of the market interest rate. Uh, in our case, in the Energy Mobility Fund, the interest rate is uh, zero. So uh, the um, borrower reimburse only the um, capital quotas and not the interest. Okay. Well, in some cases, in some other examples that we see, it's you have two triggers. It's the interest rate, which is lower than the market rate, but you can also play, if you wish, with grace periods, for instance, which is done in some soft loans. So just in simple terms, a loan which is given for better conditions than what you get on the market to get the market started. That's, that's behind. Uh, as for uh, problems about uh, the contract model to use, yes, if I am... Um, fund manager, it was uh, conflict problem. Uh, for, for the fund manager, yeah, yeah. yes, when we worked at the tender documents. Yes, we didn't have so many examples at regional level. We had an example of financial instrument from the previous programming period, but uh, uh, it wasn't on energy efficiency issue. Then we tried to work on uh, Jessica uh, instrument, but we, it, it didn't start. So we didn't have an experience at the regional level. So um, uh, we, um, uh, we uh, considered uh, some contract model from European Investment Fund and uh, from uh, the um, regulation of the shell, the European regulation of the shell. And uh, I discussed this uh, item with the external expert that worked uh, on the tender. He told me that uh, they tried to put together this model and find uh, the right way. But maybe in the document I showed you in one my final uh, slide, you can find the, doc the um, deliverable when it is explained uh, in deeply, this expert. And maybe this was directed to me, I suppose, the last mm -hmm. question, Elena and the PDA facility that we are managing. From the, from the objective, very similar or the same, I would say. Uh, it's a bit the approach that is more, it's a bit different. I would say we are more having smaller projects, so the EIB is, is going for the, the bigger ones. They are also, if you wish, even closer to the market huh, on this, so they are forced also more by market conditions. Having said that, that we have in principle the opportunity also to finance through our facility maybe more the more riskier ones, if the experts as, uh, assess it like this, if we think that it has can have can have a very good market impact if the risks are moderated. Yeah, but this is always, of course, a, a balancing decision at the end, which is taken by experts. Having said that, this is also a procedural difference. To the EIB Elena facility, there are no calls uh, that you send your projects to, but we have annual calls to do that, where we have independent experts assessing that, etc. But this, so objectives very similar, but uh, differences in the approach. Bit. There was one question over there, yeah, and the second one here. I think we take these two questions, then we even already have to close. I told you it's interesting, so collect your questions, and these two ladies will be around for the whole day still. Yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, Klaus Klitholm from European Investment Bank. I actually just want to follow up on your remark on, on Elena. 
um, and a, a small uh, advertising maybe. Uh, after lunch, there will be three sessions in this room where we will talk about projects which actually mm. were supported by Elena. So you get more insights on, on how it actually works. I fully agree with you, your statement on objectives and purpose and so on. Uh, and also maybe one thing, to, one single thing to, to add is that Elena is a grant uh, and it's, there's no repayment only in case that uh, there's the, uh, the incentive mechanism is that the grant is there for the beneficiary unless the project gets cancelled or severely delayed. So the mechanism is actually that the grant is to keep unless the project gets cancelled. There's no loan in here directly. How you finance the, the project itself can be financed through the bank or somewhere else, but LN itself is, is a grant. But uh, we can talk in details about that in, in the afternoon. I'm Martin Post from the province of uh, North Brabant in the Netherlands. I will talk about the uh, ILENA project uh, this afternoon in this same room. Uh, but my question is about um, uh, something I, I think it's important to stress. You said uh, it's only applied to situations where there is a starting market. Uh, because otherwise you probably uh, become into conflict with European regulations uh, about uh, competition, because you, you, have, you, know, you have a soft loan of 0%, ah. yes, and that can you. probably only <coughs> apply to, uh, to uh, starting markets, because it has to, be, to, has to have an innovative Sorry, element to get that uh, approved by uh, European regulations. Is that correct? Ah, Yes, um, I think that um, uh, there is no uh, um, competition danger uh, because um, uh, the regulation under which the loan is based is uh, de minimis. So under the de minimis rule, um, within the, <laughs> the rules, we, we, we will uh, ascertain that uh, the beneficiary comply uh, with the rule. Okay, thank you very much. As I told you, it was interesting, so we overrun the time already, as expected. Uh, but uh, please keep your questions. The two ladies, as I've said, they will be all around. And I also invite you now for a coffee break, but uh, also to refresh your brain, because we will restart in around 10 minutes with another interesting session, not only in this room, but in the others as well. If you want to have just two words, if you want to have some more information on the calls that we are having open on the PDA, but also other finance related topics, there is information when you leave, just grab it. There is a deadline on the 4th of September of this year, and we are always interested in very good projects. And yes, with us, enjoy the rest of the day, and uh, yes, see you later in different contexts. Thank you very much. Thank you.